I will now show you how to use the new shell hair modeling technique. So the new shell is on the right and old uh, short hair is on the left. Uh, both have advantages and disadvantages. So when you look straight along the normal of the surface, uh, the shell is looking quite okay. But when you look at the angle, you can so see some distortion. Uh, the opposite is true on the short hair. So it is looking not the best when you look at the straight at, along the normal, but it is looking quite well on the side. Uh, both uh, modeling techniques are similar uh, by using this guide object. So if you modify the guide object, it will affect the hairstyle of the shell and short hair. Uh, I will now show you how to use the new shell hairs. So let's open the scene. I have already created some vertex paint, painted like so. To create shells, just go to the side panel in the hair tool, so click set up shell hair like so. In the properties of the operator, you can increase the init color length. And now two objects are generated. You can edit the guide object that is drafted as banding box. Uh, you can go maybe to sculpt mode and move the hairs like that to get uh, effect of uh, combing the shells. And the shell itself is generated and have properties on the right. You can control the amount of geometry with shell counts. And in documentation, I'll show you uh, better examples that show clear, clearly how the, all of those parameters works. So we can use the placement mask. So if I add maybe some vertex group and in here, I will create a new one and I will create gradient from left to right. Uh, now I can use this vertex group as placement mask. You can see it is working OK. The placement fade checkbox will fade the effect. So the transition is not as sharp. Then we have on the bottom properties of the shader. So top part is affecting shell geometry and generated vertex color of the shells and bottom is only for the shader. We can increase the strands size, we can change the color, we can mix vertex color if the base mesh has it, like that. We can also add some ambient occlusion effect, like that. We can change strand width. We can increase the shell contrast. The contrast is mostly useful at the border of the fade. And then we have the strand density. It will remove randomly some strands from the shell shader texture. And then random width will randomize the width of the strands. Uh, so the shell shader is using special texture. If I show you the shader, we have in here the texture. It is looking like this. You can create and update and change this texture by going to the uh, hair baking, open shell texture scene, and you can see the preview of the texture and the properties of the texture on the bottom. You can change the scale. And just remember that if it is not integer, it won't be seamless. So just make make it integer. And then we can randomize the position of the cells. We can change the radius of the generated strands. Uh, so basically the red channel is affecting the alpha channel of generated strands. We can add some noise like that and the last parameters work as basically contrast. So after you are done with tweaking of your shader, you can just select output path and bake this texture too, and then replace your old shell texture with the result of the bake of this one. Uh, and lastly, I wanted to show you that uh, this technique is quite good with, when combined with short hair. So, in here, I have this male mesh with scalp. I will want to add uh, shell hair on the side and short 
on the top. So I will select this mesh and split it at those edges. So now I will press P to separate selection. And on the side, I will use uh, shell hair, like so. And uh, one problem is that we do not see the shell texture generated. Uh, well, usually it is because your mesh did not have UVs. So in here, we do not have UVs. So I go to edit mode, press U to unwrap, and the shells are visible. So I will uh, reduce the change the vertex color, reduce the width like that, maybe reduce the shell contrast. We have ugly border. You can fix this with mesh border height like so. And now let's go to the to the combing by going to the banning box guide object. And uh, to quickly reduce the uh, size of, and length of the strands, I go to the mesh properties of the guide object then go to the shape key and we can quickly change the shape key in in here so if i have this to zero it will blend basically to base shape so the length will be zero but we want to have some some length so that is that is okay and now i will manually comp the hair in in sculpt mode so by using notch brush uh, let's say it is looking okay for now and and we have uh, some shells generated let's go to the short hair so i will select the top and use ctrl shift h set up short hair uh, and let's go now to the properties of the generated short hair so i will reduce the path make it uh, go to zero so we have no ex no extrusion and we will select guide object of the shells of the short hair go to edit mode and i will move the guide object in edit mode like this maybe and uh, i will increase the resolution of the generated short hair like that maybe change the bend factor and add some randomization, add some noise, and tweak the color in the shading operator, in the shading uh, tab. And let's say it is looking uh, okay. So this way you can combine those two modeling techniques uh, to make short mesh hail quite uh, quickly and quite easily. If you would like to get rid of this uh, gap, you would have to prepare base mesh in advance better. So uh, this mesh is touching top with the side. So to get rid of the, the gap, we would have to make them overlap. So I will move maybe this border there up. Then I will move this border down. And uh, now if you generated the shells and short hair, the gap visible in uh, the gap visible in here will be would be smaller. Uh, so yeah, I think that covers everything about the new shell hair.